Hello and welcome back to Math 152. As you have known, classes are cancelled due to the deep freeze. And that's the reason why we are here because we do have a lot of material to cover and we cannot afford to lose a single day. Right. So uh, the first video that I uploaded uh, was on section 6.8, which is intermediate indeterminate form and uh, the L'Hopital rule. And uh, we are going to look at the new sections, actually a new chapter. We are in chapter 7 now, which is on techniques of integrations. And the first techniques that we're going to use uh, is something that we call integration by parts. So this is what integration by parts is about. Um, we kind of like derive the formulas from the product rule. So this is the things that uh, is offered in the textbooks. I will say a little bit about that, uh, but uh, I'm also going to tell you that we are not going to use a formula in the book because uh, you'll know in a minute is uh, the formulas given in the book and the techniques given is kind of like very annoying. Uh, yeah, I, hopefully you will agree with me at the end of this video. But let's just look at the proof okay, of uh, this techniques uh, of integrations known as the uh, integration by part. So we started with uh, the uh, product rule. So suppose you have a product of two functions, and obviously this is how you uh, apply the product rule. So you fix one of the px, differentiate the other one, and then you reverse the, uh, the ordering of uh, taking derivative, which means that qx now will be fixed, uh, and then px will have to be uh, differentiated. And so once you have that, applying the integral on both sides, then you will have this. And then you just have to kind of like, oh, by the way, so this is linear property for integral, so you can uh, integrating this entire sum of these two functions. It's the same as you integrate like this. That's the reason why you have this line. And then you're arranging stuff. You are basically moving this thing to this side and then move that thing to the other side. Sorry. So you are basically, yeah, right. So you are basically moving, rearranging. So you are writing this as your main term. So you have this, you move this to the other side. So you have that. Now in your book, this is so-called the integration by parts formulas. And because it involves derivative, the entire chapter sections is dealing with which one you should set it as that derivative, which one should be the P, which one should be the Q prime. And usually that is kind of difficult to uh, apply the formula because usually when we see two functions, we see them like this. We, when, I, when I ask you to integrate two functions, you usually see it like fx, gx. It's very difficult for you to think of like the gx is actually the derivative of some functions and you have to figure out what that thing is. So I'm going to uh, use this particular formulation. It's actually equivalent to this. But the way to apply this formula is very straightforward, and that is none of the uh, setting u equal to something, v equal to something, that kind of business in the book. So I kind of hope that you never learned this before, um, because if you kind of learn these techniques before, your professor will say that, hey, what's the u, what's the u, dv, whatever that thing is. Um, so I'm going to tell you uh, a slightly different way of applying integration by parts, which do not require you to identify that a particular function is a derivative of some other function. So the way uh, the, my formulas go like this, okay? So you're usually asked to integrate two functions, product of two functions, like this. So you have x, you have sine of x. So uh, there are two functions, and we want to integrate the product of these two functions. So in my methods, we don't really have to differentiate uh, which one is a uh, derivative of some function, this and that. No, we are just looking at two functions, just like here, fx, gx. Now, since this is taking, taking the integral, so obviously we have to integrate something. So we are going to choose one function uh, so that it's going to be uh, fixed. So we're going to fix one of this, and we're going to integrate the other guy. So you have two functions right here. So the techniques go uh, first you have to fix one of the functions and then integrate the other one, just right here. So you fix one of the functions, you integrate the other functions, and then you always, 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 you always put a minus sign and put an integral sign, okay? And then copy and paste the one that you, in, you 
integrated. Copy and paste the one that you integrated. And the one that's fixed, now you differentiate it. Okay, sound very complicated, but actually is very easy to apply, okay? Uh, and this notation might look a little bit weird because we have integral of integral, uh, but let's see how we actually apply in real, in real life. So for example, you have a product of two functions. This is called the fx, that's called the gx, for example. And I am going to fix my, f, my x value. I'm not going to integrate that, I'm just going to fix it. I'm going to leave this behind, okay? So I am fixing it, not doing anything, and then I integrate the other function, which is the sine x, to obtain negative cosine of x. Remember, integrating sine x is equal to uh, negative cosine of x, okay? Uh, right, so I integrated this. So this is the result after integrations. So I always put a minus, always put an integral sign, and copy and paste the entire thing that I integrated, like this and copy and paste the other thing that I integrated. And the one that left behind, okay, now you differentiate it. So you differentiate the x, you have one, and that is how you do uh, integration by part. Okay, let me say that again. Okay, so we actually write this thing down. It's very difficult to write on a tablet. And, okay, let's try. So, okay, so I am integrating x sine x dx. So I have to choose to fix one of the functions. I'm not going to touch this. I'm going to integrate this. So I am fixing this, and then I integrate sine x, which gives me negative cosine of x. And then I always put a minus. I always put an integral. And then I always copy and paste whatever I have here. That's the reason why I use a bracket to indicate that I'm just copy and paste. Now, the one that left behind, the one that you get left behind, now it's time to handle that. And now, so by taking the derivative, so taking the derivative of x is 1, and that is how you do integration by part. Fix one of it, integrate the other one, minus, okay, minus, put an integral sign, copy and paste the one that you integrated, and the one that you left behind, you differentiate it. So after you have done all this, okay, so you have that, right? So you, after you have done all this, you have that. Uh, this is just copy and paste, nothing's going on, just rewriting this. And then here, uh, we have we not finished with the integral yet because we have the integral of cosine of x dx. So now we finish it. Uh, it's not difficult. Integral of uh, integrating uh, the cosine of x gives you a uh, positive sine x. And then when you're done, because there's no more integral, then you put a constant plus c. And that's it. Okay? So this is my version of uh, integration by part. None of this requires you to identify like which function is a derivative of which function. If you look at the book, it's very confusing, especially um, when you try to do a slightly more complicated integral by part, uh, because you don't even have to look at the book. You can look at this formulas, which is given in the book. So you, when you integrate this, you have to kind of identify like, oh, okay, uh, maybe my this one is q prime. So my q is actually like cosine negative cosine of x. So you have to do a lot, a, a lot of like backward thinking to figure out what that thing is, what that thing is. Now, um, and, and uh, it's very natural just to look at the function uh, as itself, like fx is my fx is gx. None of the uh, gx is like q prime of x stuff, okay? Um, so that's integration by part. Now, uh, the first obvious question is, how the hell do you know that we should fix this? Right? Why do you know? How do you know that this is the one that you fix? This is the one that you are going to fix, not doing anything, and then integrate this guy, give this, and then minus, and then integral, blah, 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 so and so forth. How do you know this is the one that you fix? Right? Uh, let's try uh, and see what happens if you don't fix x, but you fix sine of x. Because you do have that choice. You have two functions. You have to fix one of it. How will you know x is the one that you should fix and not sine x? Okay, let's see how it happens if you try to fix sine x and repeat the process. Right, so this is here, but uh, let me learn how to write on tablet. Apparently, I don't do that. Okay, so let's do it. So uh, x sine x, same question as before, but now I'm fixing my sine x. So I'm not doing anything on sine x. Okay, and then the other one, uh, so I'm not doing anything on this. And then the other one that I left behind, now I'm going to take the integral of that. So that will be 1 over 2x squared because that's the integral of x. And then I always put a minus, always put a minus, always put an integral sign, and copy and paste the one that I integrated uh, right here, the result that the, the one that I integrated. 
And the one that I left behind, now I have to differentiate it. So I have cosine x uh, running out of space, dx. Ah, oh, OK. Yep, sorry, dx. Ah, right. Uh, uh, sorry, dx. OK. So the problem is now uh, you have x squared. Just like here, right? If you fix the uh, sine x and integrate x, okay, you get x squared over 2. Move that thing here, copy and paste, move that thing here, and then you have something. You have now you have an integral that is harder than this one. The original one have only x, and you already have trouble integrating it. Now you, you reduce it to uh, another integral which have x squared. So that is an indication that this is not a good idea. So if you do it like that, and you somehow reduces the things into something that is like more complicated, then you make a wrong choice, okay? So you make a wrong choice. Now, eventually, sometimes you do have to try, because sometimes you are encountered with a two product of two functions, none of it you are familiar with, then you do have to try. But the general principle is that, the general principle is that we want to make this integral easier, uh, and the way to do it, because you have to differentiate something, so you differentiate something reduces the power. So if you have like polynomial functions right here, that is the one that you fix because that is the one at the end you differentiate. By differentiating it, you reduces the, the power. So in this case, you can see x become 1. And then this thing is solvable because this is the things that you know how to do, but not this one. OK, so let's apply this one more time to uh, this integral. So integration by part is designed to deal with the integral of the product of two functions, some fx, gx, dx. So we want to integrate something that is like this, kind of like the product rule from the derivative. So the, for the derivative, you are thinking about, hey, the product rule, you'll be like thinking about, hey, how do we take the derivative of this? So the, the integration by parts is, instead of looking at the derivative, you are looking at the product of two function and look at the integral. So, so, so it's like you have two product of two functions. So if you have two functions, you want to integrate them. All right. So according to my formulas, okay, you have to, you have to uh, fix one of it and then integrate the other one, right? So which one should you integrate? Now, the principle is that the one that you fix, eventually you will have to differentiate. Let me show you one more time right here, right? So the one that you fix, the one that you fix, okay, right here, hang on a second, let me erase all this. Okay, so see there's a product of two functions. And so I choose to integrate this. Fx is the one that I fix, and the one that I fix, I eventually take the derivative of that. So so uh, so every one of every each of these functions have to be operated in one way or the other. So the ones that fix, at the end you have to uh, integrate. I have to differentiate it. All right. So, so, all right. Let me, let me write all this thing down. So, uh, so that's how you start x squared e x. So I am choosing to, uh, uh, fix this one and integrate this one instead. So I fix this one, not doing anything on it. So I integrate e x. You still get e x. So you don't really see, uh, actually I integrated it. And then I put an integral sign, copy and paste the one that I integrated, the result of that integration, the result of that integration. And then the one that you left behind now is times to take care of it by taking the derivative and then dx. So which is exactly right here, actually, sorry, uh, which is exactly what you have right here. So I fix my uh, e x squared, I integrate my ex, copy and paste, put, always put a minus sign, always put an integral sign, copy and paste the one that you integrated, differentiate the one that you left behind, the one that you left behind. And so, uh, so we reduce this to this. I mean, we're not done yet because that's still an integral sign. But then we don't do it x squared anymore. See, we don't do it x squared anymore. We don't do it x squared anymore. Now we have x. So we can still continue this process, continue this integration by part process, because if you look at this part, this is still integration by part. We can still use that techniques because this is, again, product of two functions. And then we are looking at the integral of that two functions, the product of that two functions. So use a big bracket. Always do that to indicate that everything right here is another integration by part. 
right? You have to use a big bracket because you do have a negative 2 here. So the negative 2 will multiply to the entire thing here. So you use a big bracket and repeat the process. Now, so look here. So we're integrating two different functions. So I'm fixing my x uh, because at the end it will be differentiated. So reduces the power. So I'm fixing my x. I integrate ex. So I get that, right? Always put a minus. Okay, always minus, always put an integral sign, always put an integral sign. And then copy and paste the one that you integrated. And then the one you left behind, you differentiate it. And then that's, that's what you get. Okay, so now multiply all this thing in. You have this from here, this by uh, distributive, by distributions. You have this, you have this. And we are not done yet because there's a, still an integral sign. But this is something that is easy. You know that integrating ex is ex, so you write this thing down here. And we're done, no more integral sign. That's the, how you know that we are done with the integral, taking the, uh, the uh, integral. So once you're done, you put a constant right here. Uh, put a constant right here. And then since there are a lot of ex, you can choose to factor out the ex, and that's what you get. So this example, we're doing exactly the same thing. But we repeat this process two times. We have to perform the integration by parts, okay, twice. Once obviously is here, another one is here. And you can see that things is going to get complicated uh, when the power of the uh, x is getting higher. But still, we know how to deal with it. Say, for example, x cubed ex dx. Well, same principle, we need to reduce this power. So that's the one that you fix, and then you integrate ex, okay, minus, always minus, put an integral sign, ex, and then differentiate this, 3x squared dx. And then, okay, the power get reduces to 2 now, and then here you will have to integrate, in, in, perform integration by parts again, and then you have to do that again because it reduces to x, and then you have to do that x again all the way reduces to something that looks like this, okay, right? So, um, again, so every time when you want to start an integration by parts, okay, you will have to decide which one you should fix, which one you should integrate. Now, um, you can also see that if you fix the wrong thing, for example, you'll be like, ah, okay, I'm going to fix ex. I'm going to integrate x squared instead. So you have x squared over 3ex, always minus, always after minus per integral sign, copy and paste that, the one that you integrated, which is this, and then differentiate the one that you left behind, which is this, uh, which means that now you make the situation worse because instead of dealing with x squared ex, which you have no idea how to do it, uh, and then you get something which is x cubed ex, which is even worse because if you don't know how to do x squared ex, you do not know how to do x cubed ex. So which means you make a wrong choice. So uh, that is not the right one to do. I mean, this formula is still true. I mean, it's true. It's just that it's not helpful. It's not useful for us. All right, cool. Okay, so, uh, so now you know if you have polynomial, that's the one that you should fix because after you differentiate it, uh, it the power get reduced, the complexity of the integral get reduced. Uh, it's not like this. The complexity get reduced and everything is cool. Okay, so that's not a good one. So, for example, this next example. So, sometimes the choice is pretty obvious because you don't know how to integrate log x yet. I mean, we're gonna, we, we'll know it in a minute, but right now, at the moment, you, would, you don't know what this thing is. And also, please do not get yourself confused. That's the reason why you need to have a very solid foundation. We have integral of 1 over x dx equals to log of x, absolute value of x plus c, but we do not know what the integral of this guy yet. Do not say that this is 1 over x. This happened because you get yourself confused. So this is not true, not true, not true, not true, not true. So make sure you know your basic very well. As I said, if you do not know your basic, everything is, is going to be a blank. It's, everything is going to be so confusing. All right, so uh, if everything is cool, you should know, you have no idea how to integrate log x yet. So, when you are faced with the integral of the two product of these two functions, and you have to fix one and integrate the other one, obviously, because of lack of knowledge, uh, you are going to fix this. It's like, I am not integrating you first. 
All right, so that's cool. Let's see what happens. So you are going to fix this and integrate this. So that's the reason why you have that and fix. And always put a minus and always put an integral sign and always copy and paste the one that you have integrated. Okay, the result after the integrations, which is this, put it here. And then the one that you left behind, you remember what you do with that guy? You take the derivative, which is the derivative of log x is 1 over x. That's the things that you need to know, right? The derivative of log x, you know. Integral of log x, not so much. So we have that. So this is super good because why is that so? Because now you can see that 1 over x and x to the power 4 get cancelled out. So you have x cubed. Now this reduces to a primary school integral, right? You remember in preschool, you know how to integrate this guy, right? So this is something that is like super manageable. So copy and paste, like rewrite all this thing, just rewrite all this thing. So now you integrate this, it's 1 over 4 x to the power 4 and you're done. There's no more integral. Then 1 over 4 with 1 over 4, make 1 over 16, and that's it. So this is a situation where the choice is obvious, which one to fix and uh, which ones to integrate. So the choice is obvious because you don't know how to deal with this. Um, right, so that gives you the answers, okay? So sometimes, uh, I mean, right, by now you should also know the choice is obvious. This is the one that you fix. 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 This is the one that you fix because, sorry, this is not, this is the one that you fix because you have no idea how to integrate. Okay, so, so far we have three examples. They are all the same. Make sure that if you have like fx, gx, okay, you have to fix one of it and then integrate the other one. Okay, so you fix one of it, integrate the other one. And the one that I said, always put a minus, always put an integral sign, always copy and paste this thing back here. Okay, and then the one that you uh, fix, left the one that you left behind, now you take the derivative. It's always like that, okay? It's always like that. And if you do it this way, you, ha you don't have to follow the book's methods to figure out which one is u, which one is v, which one is dv, which one is du. It's super annoying. All right, the next example is going to be a little bit different. This is what we call, I mean, what I call the invisible, the invisible, invincible, invis invisible right invisible one techniques which means that the one is not there but you put it there i mean the one is actually there it's just that you don't see it right so for example uh as i promised now we want to look at how do you actually integrate log x now you might say that uh right so i see only one function so i don't see another one and you said that integration by part is the one that you use for the product of two functions but i only got to see one well, actually, you can also think of another function, which is a constant value function. So this is technically speaking not a number one. This is a function which always takes the value one. Okay, you actually have a graph. The graph looks like this. This is a y, this is a x, okay? And this is your one, it's always one. We are looking at the constant value functions uh, and that constant value is one, okay? So it's actually a product of two different functions. All right, so let's... Since it's already a product of two different functions, we can apply integration by part. So remember, fix one of it, integrate the other one. And the choice for this right here is also obvious uh, because you don't know how to integrate that yet because that's exactly the questions. So, so you will fix this, okay? You will fix this and instead integrate one. So integrate one, fix this, always put a minus, Okay, I always put a minus, integral sign, copy and paste the one that you integrated, and then differentiate the one that you uh, left behind, which is log x. So as you can see, this is what we get, and this is super good news, because this is super manageable. Uh, so as you can see, we have this, and this x and 1 over x cancel out, so you are integrating just 1 dx. So again, preschool calculus give us this is x, right? So uh, that's the reason why you have that, and then plus the constant. So this is called the invisible one techniques, which is like there's no one, but we make one, and then integrate the one, uh, and fix the one that um, that you that you don't really know how to integrate. So you have to differentiate, right? So if you don't know how to integrate, but you do know how to differentiate, that's the one that you fix. Remember, the one that you fix have to be differentiated at the end. Okay, cool. So now we know. So now we know. Integral of log x is not 1 over x, okay? It's x log x minus x plus c. Okay, now 
the invisible one techniques can also be used in these situations because I have no idea how do you integrate that. Uh, okay, so if I ask you to integrate this, I don't know, but I do know how to differentiate this. I do know how to differentiate this because something wrong with my pen. Oh no. Okay. Right. What's going on? Okay. Right. Cool. Sorry. Okay. I'm a bit freaked out because just now I dropped my pen and uh, it doesn't work anymore and I have to drive to the city to buy a new one and it cost me 80 bucks. I'm not going to drop this pen ever again. Uh, so now every time it just doesn't work, it's just freaking me out. Okay. Anyway. So, uh, as I said, I do not know how to integrate this, but I do know how to differentiate this. This is the things that we learned last time, uh, section 6.6, I guess. Okay, so we do know how to the uh, derivative of inverse trig function. So this is negative 1 over 1 minus x squared. So by now, you should be very familiar with all this thing. Okay, as I said, everything is cumulative. If you do not know what's going on before that, now you'll be complete lost. Okay, so, uh, right, so I do not know, so I do not know how to integrate this, but I do know how to differentiate this. This is the time you use the invisible one. Because by putting one here and choose to fix this, choose to fix this, okay, and integrate the 1, which is x, this is fixed, always minus, always integral, always copy and paste this thing here. And then you differentiate uh, the uh, cosine, which give you this, okay, which give you this, this is that derivative. And now you can see this part here is manageable. Uh, this part here is substitutions because you see that the x squared. So if you set your u equals to 1 minus x squared, du is nice, it's negative 2x dx. You need an x, and you do have an x. Just have to fix the number a little bit, turns it into this. And, well, again, preschool integral, this is preschool integral. Give you this. Use a bracket very carefully, okay? And then, well, the 2 and negative 1 over 2 cancel out, and um, you have the u to a power 1 over 2, which is this. All right, so, so the integral of arc cosine is actually this, okay? Now, let me remind you again, sometimes, I mean, every time when you want to use integration by parts, it's always, uh, you use it always when you have, like, product of two functions. So when they don't have two, you might want to uh, look at it as if you have uh, constant value functions multiplied in front of it, Constant value function doesn't change anything, uh, especially when this is just a 1. So everything will work well by fixing the other guy and integrate the 1. All right. Okay. So let me remind you again. When you have the product of two functions, uh, you can use integration by part. And when you don't see 2, maybe you can um, think of it as if there's a constant value function 1 in front of it. And then you can see it do wonders for this example, it do wonders for this example. Okay. Actually, it's also do wonders for this example. Because if I ask you to integrate, yeah, this one might be complicated in a sense that you might do this. You will be like, okay, I know how to integrate log x now. Uh, this is like somehow we have it from before right here. This is x log x minus x minus x minus x plus c. So you'll be like, okay, I know how to do this now. So I might want to look at it as log x and log x. Okay, so I fix, I fix the log x. Okay, and then I integrate log x, which give me x log x minus x plus c. Put a minus sign, put an integral sign, copy and paste the one that you integrated. Okay, uh, drop the c and differentiate the one that you fix. 1 over x dx, so this will be this, this, I mean it's complicated, it might still work, uh, but there's also another alternative which is I think easier. If you want to try, you can try and see whether you get the same answers. By looking at this, it shouldn't be a problem because the x and x cancel, this x cancel, so you just haven't allowed x, you just have to do it one more time. So it's possible, uh, it's possible, not really a problem, uh, you can give it a try and you can compare the answers. 
you should get the same answer anyway. Uh, but another alternative is that I'm not trying that. I'm just going to put one in front of it that will still work. So integrate the one, fixing this, you get the x, always minus, always minus. Integrate the one that you integrated. Okay, copy and paste here. Differentiate this is easy. Chain rule. Two of this power one, differentiate log x, one over x. That x and that x cancel out. So you have this. And then uh, you can apply the bipart formulas again, or you can just quote the result that you have before. But I would suggest you bipart this again for the one, and then you get that and you get that. Well, it will work. Um, so uh, I don't think both methods, I think both methods is equally complicated. So you can also try this, well, and see whether or not you get the same answers. It's fine, you can do that. All right. Uh, another another type of example another type of example is what we call the one that just don't die right for example cases like this right by now uh, you should be very uh, confident with your integration by part now so that's a product of two functions you take the integral and as I said, we have to fix one of it and integrate the other one. You can actually fix sine x, integrate e x, or fix e x, integrate sine x. They are the same thing. So in this case, I'm going to show you one of it, which is I am going to fix e x. So e x is going to be fixed, and then I'm going to integrate sine x, which is this. Always put a minus sign and integral sign. Okay, copy and paste the one that you have integrated. And the one that you uh, differentiate, the one that you fix, now you have to differentiate. I forgot my dx. How could I? Okay, so uh, then this is just rewriting this. And then this, I'm taking the negative and negative and combine them to a plus. And then now I back to this. So it's the same complexity because if you don't know how to do this, you will not know how to do this because this is at ex sine x. And then you have the cosine and then ex. So yeah, he said, like, how do we deal with this? It was like, yeah, we have to buy part again. So let's do that. So this is just rewriting what happened here. Put a big box and now I'm by parting here. So again, I'm fixing my ex. So uh, then I integrate cosine x, which is this. Put a minus always, put an integral sign. Copy and paste the one that you integrated and differentiate the ones that you have. And you'll be like, oh my god, we get back the same thing here. It just would not go away. If you keep going, this thing is going to pop up again, again, again. You have the cosine version, ex, sine version, ex, cosine, ex, cosine, ex. This is what it means that the one that just don't die. So how do we complete this integral? Well, the way we complete this integral is to recognize that this term and this term is the same and do something about it. So I'm going to change my notation a little bit so that it's easier for you to understand. Some people can actually see it now, but let's say we change the notation a little bit. I'm going to call this integral i, okay? Whatever this guy is, I'm going to call it i. All right. Now, uh, this is the same as before. So we are fixing the ex, integrate the sine x. Put a minus sine integral, copy and paste this thing here, differentiate this, so and so forth. And from before, you see that this is that. And then you integrate, you by part again. So you by part again, uh, by part again. And then you get this. And you realize that this is exactly the same as this. So you give it a name, you call i. So this is actually this term here, and then plus this term here, and minus, I call this i. So I have i equals to some stuff minus i. So Preschool algebra will tell you that you can move this i here, so to make 2i, right, equals to whatever that box is, okay? So this is that box, okay? So you move the i to the other side, you have 2i equal to that box, this is that box, okay? All right, and then i divide by 2, so I have that, so that's i, that's i, and therefore I have the integral. So even though they just don't die, but uh, it's good enough so that you can actually, they actually repeat itself with a minus sign so that you can move the whole thing to the other side and uh, combine it with, uh, with the integral to give two times of that integral. So what's that integral? Well, it's half of whatever this thing is. All right, hope this makes sense. All right, uh, so basically you kind of already have all the things that you need to know uh, we have a very complicated formulas here, which is called the reduction formula. 
since we are doing this online and you can watch it and pause it and whatever you want so it would not be too taxing in to present this technique so I uh, one of the like slightly more complicated formulas so um, we'll do that in a minute but right now I want to make a big summary so uh, what I'm saying is okay if you have the uh, you are asked to find the integral of the product of these two functions well you you have to integrate one of it you cannot integrate both of it because you know like this is then you get back to the same questions so the integration by parts techniques will say six one you cannot do both so you have to uh, divide and conquer or whatever so you fix one of it and not doing anything on it and then you integrate g dx okay and then always put a minus always put an integral sign and whatever you get you 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 achieve you found whatever you found right here you copy and paste okay this is what we've been doing and then uh, the one that you get you left behind this is the one that you differentiate and that is my version of formulas integration by part okay so um, if you do this there's no none of this u v du whatever dv that is presented in the book which is very confusing uh, this doesn't require you to use to do anything. You are just fix one of it, integrate the other one, always minus, integral sign, and then copy and paste the one that you integrated and differentiates the one that you left behind. Okay, so finally, we are going to look at this example. It says that, it says that, he asked you to prove that, uh, integral of cosine to the power of n dx can be uh, expressed as this form can be expressed in this form okay for all the n integer n greater or equal to 2 this is involving a techniques that you might have not seen before but once you have seen it it shouldn't be very complicated it does i mean it uses something that's weird for example the first thing you do is to get one of the cosine x out because n is greater or equal to 2 anyway so we can do that so we are like take one of it out and then you have n minus 1 left so now you have two product okay we're not using the one technique here so we are splitting them into these two uh, so we do have two product now so uh, we are fixing this and we choose to integrate cosine of x which is positive sine x Put a minus, put an integral sign, copy and paste this thing here. And then we have to differentiate this. This is chain rule. Power go down. Okay. Power minus one. This guy is still here. And then go in and differentiate this, which gives you this. All right. So this is what you get after you do uh, the first by part. Uh, number. This is just a number. This uh, negative, negative, make a plus, which is here. 1 sine x, 2 sine x, you multiply them, you get sine x squared, and nothing very fancy, you have that, and you move to n minus 1, which is a number, you can move it to the front. Now, the thing that is a little bit different now is that we kind of wanted to use the techniques that you have seen before, the things that doesn't die, and we kind of hoping that we have like i, and then we have something, we have a minus i, so that we can move this thing to the other side. We are doing the same thing here because this doesn't really this is not really helpful all right so uh but uh i probably can kind of like get cosine to the power of n again right i wanted to um i'm missing a, a cosine square then i can do this if i have a cosine square i will be able to do that and then you remember that sine square x and cosine square x they are related cosine square x plus sine square x equals to one so sine square will be equal to 1 minus cosine square which is right here so i'm changing my sine square into cosine square sorry into 1 minus cosine square x and so i have that that is from here and then i can distribute I'm distributing now distributing so the first distribution gives you this second distribution gives you this make sense so the first distribution gives you this second distribution gives you this that is what we want Right, that is the same as this one. All right, so now uh, distribute the n minus 1, distribute the n minus 1. So you have this integral, which we have no idea.
but then this after you distribute as you can see after you distribute you have this this I can move to the other side okay so here look here so this is a one this is this so when I move to the other side I will have one plus okay and minus one okay of that whole integral stuff which is right here and minus one and one cancel out so actually apparently this side here this side here is just n so I'm dividing n across okay so I'm dividing n across n across n across so this n over n is our one and then we have this this is called a reduction formulas you might not understand why you call it a reduction formulas okay you just know r is a formulas why is it a reduction formulas uh well because we can do this now so this n is for all integer greater than or equal to two so we can put n equal to two okay so if you put n equal to two this is two so we know this integral this is one over two this is two minus one which is just one this is two minus one over two this is this uh two minus two is zero anything power zero is one so this thing for n equal to two if you this you don't have to do by part or whatever uh this is just x and you got a formula for the integral of cosine square x and you can use try to figure out what happened to n equal to three so if you apply the formulas you will have i mean sorry i should have copied it here apply the formula apply the formula change to n equal to three you have that you have that you have that and uh so we also know how to do this so we get this answer that's kind of like our base case the easy case and then n equal to four you substitute the other n equal to four you will get into this now the reason why it's called reduction formulas is now is because that the four the power four integral get reduced to power two integral and we already know the answers this answers this answers is coming from right here so we already know the answer we can copy and paste and we get that and you can do obviously n equal to five and equal to six and uh during that integral you will run into um you will run into uh integral of uh cosine of uh lower order and those cosine of lower order already been covered by all these computations so you will get all these formulas uh because all these formulas for the higher integral get reduces to smaller one so the reduction formula is just because this integral for the higher power get reduced to the integral for the smaller one. So just some you know fancy formulas that a lot of engineers uses it uh, to compute stuff and like it's some good formulas that you need you want to have. Uh, and um, well, I'm just showing you here uh, so that you can follow. It's not too complicated. Actually, it, every techniques that we use is here, uh, you have seen it before. For example, the things that you have to move to the other side, and also like the rest are just kind of like a little bit of algebra, trigonometric stuff. Okay, right. So this is section 7.1, integration by part. Uh, as usual, this is definitely not enough. I will post web assigned questions tomorrow. I'm still in the office. I need to get out of here. This is 10.30 and um, it's very cold outside. It seems to be very scary. I don't know what's going to happen to my car. It should be fine. I think it should still... I mean, it should be fine. Okay, right. Okay, at least that's what I'm trying to tell myself. Okay, cool. Right, so I will assign web assigned questions. Um, and... Um, yeah, you should give it a shot because now you have a whole bunch of stuff and the only thing you need now is practice, practice, and practice. Okay. All right. So I see you on Friday. We will do a quiz on Friday on this topic as well. Um, I will kind of answer some of your questions in the beginning of class. Maybe we spend five minutes answering your questions before we do a quiz. Uh, and then we will consider that I have taught you section 7.1 and we'll move to section 7.2 which is still techniques of integrations, but it, it will involve a lot of trigonometric function and stuff. And so uh, we'll see you on Friday. And uh, uh, let me know if you have any question before the quiz. And uh, that's it. All right, stay warm and good night.